Fire Crow just released 2.0 and it's right now the hardest tool to turn any websites into LM ready data for your AI agents. In this video, you'll learn all the essential features about Fire Crow as well as their new AI agent designed to smartly interact with websites. Okay, so here on the left hand side, we have a list of Fire Crow features and I'm going to use an analogy of navigating through the library system to explain how these features work in action. Let's first talk about the scrape feature. Now suppose this is our library.com and each part of the library, like this AI corner for example, represents a page from this website. So that will be library.com slash AI. So this scrape feature will visit a page using this URL and return everything that's inside. So that will get us back the LM books, the NAM books, machine learning, and everything else. And eventually, all these things will be returned to us either as a markdown file, a text summary, or an HTML format. Let's look at a real life example. Now, suppose this is the AI book section in our library from Goodreads. And then if we go to the Firecrop playground and select this great tab, we'll be able to paste in this URL and configure the format that we would like it to be returned. So I'm going to get everything, including a clean HTML, a full page screenshot, and you can also configure some other options here, such as whether you want to pass PDF, it defines, exclude any text, which basically means some elements on your website, and also configure wait time channel, etc. But now let's just go ahead and click start scraping. And once it is done, you can see that it returns us a few results, including a markdown file, which is basically just dumping everything you saw on a website. So for example, this is like the header of the website, uh, AI books, which is something like this you saw here. And you can see that there are a few titles here, like this book, like this different intelligence paths uh, with the markdown format. You also see a summary about how what this page is about, some of the links that about the books, the HTML file format, and also a full page screenshot from that. Next, we have batch screen. Now, this is very similar to the standard scrape feature, but instead of only taking one single URL, it allows us to take in multiple URLs all at once. So in this example, you can scrape multiple parts from the library, like the AI section, the nonfiction section, the science, and return all the books that are from all these sections. So just a reminder that batch scrape is not available on the Firecrawl playground, but you can find the API documentation from the spec URL here. Now for the crawl feature, instead of you specifying which particular sections from the library that you're interested in, we're just going to tell Firecrawl, go and fetch all the books from the entire library for me. So the crawler will visit each room here and return us book about science, AI, fiction, nonfiction, history, magazines, children's, until it has exhausted the entire library. Let's also take a look at the crawl feature in action. Now, this time, I'm just going to use www.goodreads.com to demonstrate that the crawler can actually scan through the entire site, but not just some direct URL to the AI page. Now, this time, very similarly to how you would do for scrape feature, you also have the format configuration, like markdown, summary links, etc. But for now, I'm just going to stick with the markdown format. If we look at the options here, we can see a few extra options that are on top of the scrape feature. Now, the first one is ignore sitemap which basically tells the crawler, do I want to ignore the site structure file from the website or not? And then the second thing, it's the crawl entire website, which is pretty much self-explanatory if you look at this uh, explanation here, whether to scrape also pages from the subdomains or just this domain that we have inputted here. And then the limit feature is something I want to explain more. It's the maximum pages that the crawler should finish. So let's say if we just leave it to 10 pages here, then the crawler will just complete its job whenever we scrape 10 pages. But if we like, let's say it's at a high limit, then the crawler is going to take a much longer time until it fetches 100 pages. So now let's just go ahead and click start crawling. So we can see that now the status is pending and then we'll just kind of return the results when the crawling is finished. So now the crawling is done. You can see that it returns a few pages here, like the landing page, the sign in page the terms of use, etc. And eventually, finally, if you scroll to almost the bottom, we finally have uh, a relevant content, which is actually a book about animals. And then we have another one and the final one. Now, at this point, you may wonder, how do I actually prevent the crawler from crawling something that I'm not interested in? Like, I'm not really interested in the landing page or the privacy policy. And that's how the semantic crawling feature from Fryco 2.0 will help. 
So it actually allows us to provide a prompt to the crawler to specify some of our requirements. For example, we're only interested in the books about AI. So I can actually prompt it to only crawl books about AI and restart the crawling. And let's see how the results will be. As expected, we get more relevant results and you're free to expand on the prompt to give you even more relevant results based on your preferences. Now, since crawling usually takes much longer time and most of the time we don't even need that large amount of content to start with. So that's how the map feature will be useful. Now, instead of crawling the entire library's content, the map feature will only return us the structure of the website, which means all the URL paths that are associated with this domain. Now, with this list of URLs, you can now do a powerful AI workflow like asking the AI agent, can you find me all the books about LMs? And then the AI agent will decide that the books is most likely going to be from this URL page, which represents the AI session. And then instead of just scrolling the entire library's content, it can instruct Firecrawl to only do a single scrape for this AI session. And the result is just like 10x more efficient and less costly. Now, if we take a look at the map feature here, now we provide the home directory for the Goodreads shelf and start mapping. And then what it does is that it returns a list of links or a list of URLs that are the directory items for the shelf. So for example, we have the first link that we have used, um, the shelf slash show slash AI, which represents the AI books directory. We have algorithms, we have like tech stack, we have mountain romance, whole bunch of other directory items that are in this domain. Moving on, we have the search feature, which has two essential properties. Number one, instead of providing URL as an input, we'd expect a natural language query as a text, and then Firecrawl would decide on what sources that it will scrape from. Now, second, with those sources determined, Firecrawl will return us content from all those multiple sources, and those sources could be coming from images, it could be coming from webs or news articles. So in this library example, we will start with a natural language query, like, can you find me some popular books about LLM? And then Firecrawl will decide that, okay, I'm going to search through library1.com, library2.com, library3.com, and then just return all the books about LLM inside their respective AI sections, like so. And eventually, the markdown file in the result will just contain all the books that are from the free libraries. To see the search feature in action, we can now head to the playground again and go to this search tab and just input a natural query here, like I'm interested in books about AI and LMs. And then we're able to configure the sources, such as whether we want only web pages, we want images, news articles. And similarly, we can also configure how many pages that the search feature should return. So now I'm going to stick with the default option and just start searching. So the results are actually returned pretty quickly. So you can see that we have a Reddit link about some books about LLMs. We have a Medium article. We have some AI engineering books from some of the Substack blogs and a bunch of YouTube videos and other resources and Amazon links. With the Firecore Extract feature, this is how things get a little bit more interesting. Now, at this point, no matter whether you're using the scrape feature or using the crawl feature, Firecrawl is going to return you all the raw content as a markdown, HTML, etc. But most of the time, it contains too many unnecessary information. Now, for example, in my use case, I'm only really interested in the titles and the links from the books so that later I can Google more about them, find out their reviews and decide whether I want to actually buy a copy from. So I don't need the authors, I don't need the, let's say, publication date and all those ne necessary information. So what I can do is that I can provide a schema to Firecrawl. Let's say it's going to be an array of titles and links like so. And Firecrawl will use the extract feature to only return us the titles and links from the scrape content in a structured JSON format. And this is just way more useful as most of the time we need a structured format to deal with automations. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is the extract feature with the Fire One agent capability. And you may wonder what's the difference between without or with. Now, let's just head to the Fire Crawl documentation to see how it explains. So Fire One agent enables us to do intelligent navigation and interaction with web pages. So most likely in cases you need to uncover some data, for example, if some things are hidden in a drop-down menu or hidden with some sort of elements, then Fire One agent can be instructed to uncover those and just like click on buttons, links, inputs, and do multiple pages, navigations, so that you get all the essential content from those websites. Let's move over to the extract playground and demonstrate what I was just talking about. Now, suppose we want to extract the titles and links, again, from this AI books directory, 
What we can do here is that in this schema tag, I specify that I want an array of strings, which are actually titles. And then I also want an array of links, which are strings again. And then in the options, I can specify the extraction prompt, extract the titles and links for the book items found in the Goodreads page, and actually turn on the file one agent option here to make it a little bit more smarter. So we can now start extracting and wait for the results. As expected, now we have the result, and the result include an array of links, which are actually string URLs to the book, and also we have the title of the books. And if we just look at the titles here, it's actually mapping exactly what it shows in the AI books directory. So at this point, you learn every concept about Firecrawl. Let's head back to any end and see how we can build a workflow using its API. As usual, I'll be sharing this template for free. All you need to do is to join the free school community, which is linked in the video description below. Go to Classroom and go to this Master Fryer Core 2.0 endpoints, and you'll be able to find the workflow resource and download from here. And just a quick intro of AI Builder Slab. If your businesses need help building out AI automations and projects, feel free to reach out and go to joinaibusiness.com and scroll to the bottom in the contact form. You can reach out and we'll be happy to discuss more. And finally, if you want to level up your AI skills and monetize with automations, we also have a paid community where we have a group of business owners sharing our wins and insights of selling AI automations. And inside the community, you'll also be able to find a structured learning path for any end and some ready-to-use blueprints to kickstart your projects. All right, so back to our workflow. I'm going to use an example of fetching the Goodreads AI books from the shelf. So you can see that there's a lot of AI books listed here. And what I'm going to do is to use the extract feature from Firecrawl to give me the titles and links and then feeding them all to the GPT-5 model and decide on which book I'm going to look for more based on my preferences. Now to kickstart the workflow, I have a manual trigger as the first node, which means just when I click on this execute workflow, it will execute. And then secondly, I have the extract node from the Firecrawl community nodes. Now to use the community node, all you need to do is to go to any end cloud or your local version and search for Firecrawl. And you just have to make sure that you're using the latest version, which I believe it's 1.0.5 as the time of this video, which have access to the V2 endpoint. So in this case, it's going to be the extract data node. And if you click inside, then you will be prompted to create a credentials, which is the API key for the Firecrawl. Now, essentially, this is pretty easy. You just need to head back to the Firecrawl API keys tab and then copy this thing. And essentially, this is the API key to assess the endpoints. And for this case, you can just leave the base URL as v2. And then in the operation side, you can have a lot of uh, options to choose from. But if you have chosen from the panel that I just uh, configured, you should be able to land on this extract data operation directly. And now here is the custom schema that I provided. So the only reason I use a custom schema is that I want to provide the agent model to be fine one to handle some complex navigations, uh, which is not available at the moment from this community node, but everything else should be all good. And you can also see the prompt here. I have extracted titles and links for the best book in AI for me. And everything else is just from the template JSON. So next step, it's a little bit more complicated procedure and we'll be using a technique that is called polling. The reason we need to use that is the extract with agent feature takes a longer time to complete. And that's why we need to use another endpoint to actually get the extract status. And the way that we operate is that for every 15 seconds of wait, we'll trigger this endpoint once. And in case we already have some results, we'll call the AI agent node as a next step. And if it is not yet having a result, we'll just do another 15 seconds wait and try to get the status in a loop format until it actually gives us the result. So in this case, uh, when, you know, the status is equal to complete, completed, we hit the true branch and eventually we just pass all these data links to the AI model and then with this prompt, I'm interested in learning the basics of LM. Could you pick three books from the list that are most suitable for me? Together with all those JSON data, GPT-5 Mini is able to provide me with a summary of which books that I should be looking into. For example, like this 100 pay machine learning book uh, with this offer and explain why is that and essentially just giving me a holistic summary. So that's it for today. I hope you guys learned a thing or two. And as usual, if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and it will really help the growth of channels so that we can deliver more high quality content like this. See you next time.